Oh. You guys seem to enjoy hearing about my awkward moments. The times in my life where I am so embarrassed and full of cringe-induced discomfort that I don't even know what to say or do. Luckily for you, not me, I have had plenty of experiences like that. Oh man. So without further ado, let's share it to the whole world. <laughs> the summer of 2014, year eight, 13 years old. This was a thing. How was this a thing? What a time to be alive. As I said, this story is set in summer, during the peak of it all. Imagine a pack of sweaty teenage kids waddling down the hallways, leaving long trails of moisture behind them like slugs. And the smell after sitting in a classroom with them for over an hour straight? Yeah, gross. I was sitting in my humid geography classroom with all my other slimy students when my teacher suddenly arrived. <sighs> hey guys. Yeah, he didn't help the situation either. But hey, what can I say? Summer definitely affected all of us. Let's call this teacher. Mr. B. He wasn't a legitimate teacher, just one of those fill-ins that schools seem to pull off the street so that at least we have someone to supervise us misbehaving. He was the kind of teacher that would try and teach the class, but got no one's attention. And do you know what he did to try and get everyone to concentrate? He got up in front of the class and made a moving, inspirational speech about how gaining knowledge is so important and that we shouldn't be giving up and it gives us powers like just kidding he did absolutely nothing if someone did something a little out of line which wouldn't take long to happen there was a lot of oh no stop that we are learning about tectonic plates today not flappy bird hey sir do you want to have a go? Oh yeah, why not? He just didn't have any good skills in controlling a class. And with that, I learned nothing. <laughs> also, quick side note real quick that is unrelated to the story. It was his birthday on this particular day and he played It's My Birthday on the big screen and danced to it in front of the whole class. Oh my god, my eyes. Now let me paint you this picture. Not that one, this one. Now let's just paint inside the lines and <laughs> crap joke. I was sitting at the back of the classroom with my friend. Let's call her Angel. I had another friend in the middle here. Let's say her name is Caitlin. And there were these two boys at the front on the left hand side. See this one? Not really important. Get out of here. But this guy. Well, he's one that made this story a thing. So he's pretty important. Let's call him Derek. So Angel, Caitlin and I were writing notes on pieces of paper and chucking them across the room to each other. All the while, Mr. B sat at his desk and was probably watching a fly crawl past or watching us throw notes and not even realizing that we should be doing something else. Honestly, who knows with this guy? Who hired him? So in general, there was nothing crazy about these letters to begin with. Just the normal, hey, how are you? Are you doing anything this weekend? And a lot of you smells. 10 out of 10 roasting. OMG, she said I smell. I have to come up with a better comeback. How about Uh, what was that? No idea, but that was so annoying. Angel went to throw this message, but somehow her aim was completely out of whack. Because of this, the paper seemed to fly with its own trajectory, landing in front of the two boys I mentioned earlier. Get out of here, you idiot! Yeah, they were obviously confused to find a message, you smell more. Bruh, we never said you smelt. Yeah, we don't smell either. <laughs> You sure, brother? So now Derek and his sidekick were now involved in this friendly conversation. Now let's fast forward a bit because literally nothing exciting happens until this freshly ripped piece of paper enters the chat and was ready to cause mayhem. <laughs> Caitlin thought it was time to spice things up. Ugh, these boring convos and you smells are just getting so bland and repetitive. Wait, hold up. A love note confession letter to Derek? 
Now that would be perfect. Something to get the drama happening. I don't like him that way, but I can make one and say it's from someone else though. Let's make it from Jess. So anyway, she begins to write this extravagant letter which goes along the lines of, Dear Derek, I really like you and I was wondering if you wanted to date sometime. By the way, if you didn't get that, I really, really like you. Okay, thanks, bye. Jess. You're probably thinking, uh, Jess, why didn't you stop her? Well, the thing is, I had no idea this was going on. She was over here, remember? Then, as you would probably guess, Derek throws the letter towards me. The bell rang and we had to move on to the next class. I just stuffed his letter in my pocket thinking that it wasn't really important and that I could just read it later. Next class, not important. The bell rings, signaling that school has finished for the day. So there was Derek and a couple of his friends waiting around for the bus to arrive. Uh, uh, hey, my bus is here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And then there was this girl who was sitting near Caitlin in geography. She goes to me like, hey Jess. You realize Caitlin made a love letter from you and, uh, sent it to Derek. Are you kidding me? As I said, I literally had no idea this occurred. No one said anything to me until this moment. My bus eventually arrived and when I was sitting there being driven home, I remembered I had Derek's note in my pocket. His response to the so-called love letter was just a hand movement away. I reached into my pocket and pulled it out, scared to read what it might say. Gulp. It went along the lines of this. Dear Jess, I am honestly so flattered that you feel that way, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm ready to jump into a relationship. My last relationship at my last school didn't go so great, and I kind of want to stay away from that type of thing for a while. I hope you understand. This definitely doesn't mean we can't still be friends. I think you're a cool gal. Derek. I sat there, frozen. Oh my god, no, 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 no. I definitely don't like him in that way. What do I do? I've got to tell him that the letter wasn't from me. I hopped off the bus, walked home, and immediately messaged him. Because this phase of my life, I only had an iPod. With no online social life until reaching Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, I sent him a message. Hey Derek, I'm sorry to tell you, but that letter today wasn't from me. Oh, hi Jess. Oh, really? Are you sure? Um, yeah. Well, anyway, don't worry. Your secret is kept safe with me. Um, what? Why can't you just get the message? But seriously, that letter wasn't from me. <laughs> uh. So after that whole occurrence, nothing was really said. I was hoping he would get the idea that I wasn't into him like that and we would move on. Fast forward again. This time a whole year into the future. Remember that friend I said wasn't important? Get out of here. Well, now he is. Let's call him Joe. Who's Joe? Joe Mama! He says that all the time in real life. Joe told me once during class that Derek told him and his friend group that I had a massive crush on him the year before. Just why couldn't he get it? Was it that hard? I said, no, it wasn't me. That's it. To this day, I don't know why Caitlyn did this. I was never upset with it though, I was just really confused. Six years on now and I bet no one remembers it. Except me. This stupid story haunts me at night. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you all liked it. Also Derek, if you're ever watching this... Hi. Ahahaha. Uh -huh. <laughs>